remember very clearly being at the Investec Derby where you, when you interview royalty, you've got to get the exact titles right. Now, I hope you know where I'm heading with this because we need to know what your title is now and what it's going to be at the end of the month. Well, I'm certainly not royalty, but um, I'm now an inductee into the International Horseshoeing Hall of Fame, the first South African to have been inducted. It's not mandatory for any farrier to get a qualification the like of which you have managed to acquire, which tells me that it's a burning desire, but also the respect of the company to become globally accepted. Absolutely, Andrew. I think they currently are, I speak under correction, but they're in the region of about 340 associates in the world. Uh, there are currently two of us here in South Africa, myself and Johnny Murdoch. Uh, it's a very high level exam. It's what they call a, a equivalent to an Ofqual level five, which is pretty much an under degree in Ferrari. Well, in order to become a professor or to become a doctor, there are many exams to be written, not only physical exams that you write, but also many years of experience that entitle you to that knowledge and to the way in which you diagnose things. Where did it all start for Robbie Miller? Uh, uh, with him. Um, wow, can you believe it? Justin Snaith just walked past. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, I've been with Justin for many, many years now. Started off shooting in Port Elizabeth and um, then I came to Cape Town. I spent a couple of years here and then I had things that I had to go and do in my life and Justin actually contacted me and asked me to come back to Cape Town and uh, thanks to him and to Pippa Mickleborough from Avantia Stud, I'm back here in Cape Town and, and yeah, I've, I've never looked back. And are they paying your airfare to get inducted into the Hall of Fame? Uh, no, listen, this is a little bit of a touchy subject seeing as that the induction is in Met Week. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a tight one, but um, we'll have all of our ducks in a row and I have an incredible team. Uh, all of my fairies in my team are qualified, so you know, it's, it's, I've got full support. There are certain horses that I prefer to look after myself, which I'll make sure that they're good to go for Met Day. But uh, other than that, I think we'll be all systems go. Um, many years ago when I was growing up, there was a gentleman by the name of Brian Cherry very famous Natal trainer and a guy called Kit Kensley used to work for him. I saw Kit today. He, he looks like he could actually ride 55 in a group one. He's probably one of the fittest men I've ever met and I believe he is the man responsible for shoeing El Mutana. Absolutely. Kit is not only is he a good top, top farrier, he's a very good friend of mine as well and we oftentimes will we'll sit and chat over a horse together. And um, I mean, Kit is not a youngster, but you know, he looks like he's 10 years younger than I am. He's super fit. And uh, as I say, he's still at the top of his game. I mean, there's the result of it. So and he's a guy that I remember him suffering terribly from asthma. Obviously, he's, he's really looked after himself. Well, he's had one or two medical issues, um, but he's come through it. He's healthy, he's fit. And he's still, as I say, he's at the top of his game. And he's one hell of a gentleman as well. Robbie, just before you leave us, if you could possibly impart some advice to young farriers starting out um, about hard work, about study, about working together in a team. It's, I think the simplest thing that I can say to any young farrier and the most important thing is don't isolate yourself. Get involved with other farriers, learn, grow, develop, work on your skills and then you will never look back. But don't ever isolate yourself.